quick demo of our new interface for um, previewing different kinds of activity types. So on the left side here I have a list of uh, old activity types that <coughs> are currently um, uh, active for this uh, instance of frog. So I can look at for example a quiz and we see here on the left the configuration uh, for this quiz. Um, uh, on the right side we see how it would actually look for a single student. So the default uh, with nothing filled out looks like this. Um, we also have some preloaded um, data here um, which comes from the person who made this activity um, designed to kind of showcase the diversity. Um, so for example we see here that we can have a, a statistics quiz and uh, that supports math. Um, we can have a quiz where we ask a student to justify their answer. Um, we can have uh, shuffling questions and uh, as I choose these different examples here you'll see that the, the config is updating and these are live synced so um, if I go in here and start editing you'll see that it's uh, updating live if I uh, go down here and I say I need them to uh, provide a justification uh, we see here there's a justification um, now this is only a single student, but one of the advantages of Frog is that it's very easy to have collaborative activities. So we can add a second student. Now we have uh, two students. Um, and so one of the things we see right away is this shuffling. We see that the order of the questions, um, question one is different for the two people, and also the ordering of the options within the questions. We can select here we want only the answers to be shuffled right so the questions are the same but uh, the order of the options are shuffled or only the questions um, so on so we can play around with that um, now in this case if I answer something here you see that it's not updated on the other side because they're currently in a this is a private um, activity so you're not sharing data with anyone else but we can make it into a group activity you see now that uh, Chen Li and Maurice are both in group one, and suddenly, um, you know, data is is updating. Um, if since we have a justification here, uh, I can type here, and uh, of course it's live synced, and this is proper collaborative editing. Uh, I can still edit the title. I can uh, remove a question. So uh, we also have some dashboards. Uh, and we can look at them as well. So here I can look. So we have, for example, here a bunch of different dashboards. We have a progress dashboard uh, based on uh, when groups uh, complete uh, different tasks. So we see here that uh, because there's only one group, uh, they're making rapid progress. Um, we have a leaderboard. Uh, group one here is <laughs> in the in the lead, as you can see. Um, so I'm going to switch back to. Uh, individ individual and now of course we get uh, Chen Li and Maurice um, if we had uh, a quiz with um, with coordinates um, which we don't have an example of here uh, we, we could be able to actually plot um, plot where people are and uh, we can see their justifications. So there's a few different, okay, we can see what answers they've actually provided. Again, of course, everything's updating live. So, um, Okay, we can have, um, let me just do one soon. So we can have rich text, you see here, we can have, uh, we can easily include videos, uh, we can have pictures and questions. Um, and, uh, and one interesting thing is, is actually just trying out this uh, hacks bookmarklet that I just uh, saw, um, which actually kind of works uh, in the sense that it, uh, uh, actually, let's us uh, edit this stuff live, which is pretty crazy. 
Uh, of course, currently that's not being saved anywhere, and I'm not quite sure how we would do that, but uh, possibly something to look forward to. Ah, you're a liar uh, in the future. Anyway, so let's see. I'll just reload to get rid of that. Um, we also have, um, so we're very interested in dashboards to support um, different kinds of rich uh, orchestration by the teacher. And um, uh, so for example, for this activity, we need a, a configuration. And this is a little activity we ran in class where students uh, need to, um, so we're basically trying to measure whether they respond faster if the color corresponds to um, what is being asked, and uh, again we have uh, this progress dashboard that I was showing you. Um, so in an actual class, we'll have um, you know a few hundred people doing this at the same time, and we're interested in seeing how the progress dashboard actually looks over time, uh, especially as we're trying out different algorithms to try to predict when people will complete the task. Um, different ways of, of um, visualizing data. And so in addition to having some uh, data sets um, with configuration data, which you've seen here, we also have some data sets of existing log data. Uh, so, uh, okay, so the, right now the layout is crazily messed up for some reason, but um, for the progress bar we can choose this data set. This used to be without all this white space. Um, and we have a little slider here. So these are actually about 7,000 log items that were generated during an actual class. So we can go back and see how that would look at any one time. Um, and uh, we can also, so here we see this is 105 students at this point after two minutes. Um, but we can also play. So we can play it at, let's say, 16 speed. And now we see how it would look for the teacher um, because the dynamics of this visualization is really important. It's not just about the final um, way it looks, but it's about the way it's being drawn because um, as the class is proceeding, the teacher will be looking at this and, and um, gauging, for example, when it's time to move to the next activity. Uh, so we're hoping this tool will also be really nice in helping us um, develop new visualizations. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's uh, all kinds of fun. Oh, that's interesting. Um, there's all kinds of fun um, uh, activities to play with and uh, somehow some code that I just merged is a little buggy but uh, we'll get that fixed. Anyway, uh, just a, a quick uh, demo and uh, yeah.